Hello, my name is Officer Clark and this is Officer Facero. We're with the Kalispell Police Department and uh, we're here today to talk to you about Active Intruder and uh, Run Lock Fight. We are both members of the Northwest Run Lock Fight Group and in the days before COVID, what we've done for the past four years is go around to each individual school. We've almost hit all the schools in the valley and um, I think we've taught about 3,000 different teachers and probably close to 50 schools or different venues on what to do in case of an active intruder. All right, thanks for being here. Um, again, we today we're going to talk about run lock fight individually through a PowerPoint presentation. So we appreciate your time, and we just want to let you know that uh, this is just a life tool for our toolbox. Um, this is not a political debate. This is just something that has shown that has worked um, throughout the years, research based, and and you know we think is most important for our students and staff. So we appreciate you being with us. So during the course of the PowerPoint today, some of the ideas we're going to talk about are whether to run, whether to lock, or heaven forbid we have to fight. Uh, they don't happen in any particular order. Um, after viewing and learning from the PowerPoint, you will know in which situation, what is dictated to you, what you will do in that situation, whether it is to do one of those three things. One of the reasons that we feel this run lock fight training is so important is because it's what you do the instant an incident takes place that is so important. The police might not arrive for two, three, four, five minutes and studies have shown that every 15 seconds someone can become a casualty. And so it's very important what you do to save your life as well as the lives of others in acting and moving in the correct ways. All right, thanks again for joining us here. Um, we're gonna jump into the PowerPoint and we appreciate your time. What is or what defines an active shooter? An active shooter is an individual or individuals actively engaged in killing or attempting to kill people in a confined and populated area. And remember, the goal of an active intruder is to cause as much harm as possible and it's our job through training and preparedness to mitigate that. And we can do that through run lock fight. Why do we train? This training is meant to give students options to stay safest when confronted with dangerous or life-threatening situations. The knowledge and skills shown here can help you potentially make effective and life-saving split-second decisions. During a critical active intruder incident, studies show that on average, someone can lose their life every 15 seconds. The average incident is over in three to four minutes. Police re response time could vary greatly from two to seven minutes locally. It is your response that is going to make the greatest difference in that time frame. The positive steps that you take before law enforcement arrives can greatly impact the outcome of the incident for you and others around you. So today we're hoping to um, let you guys know about the three phases of the critical incident, denial, deliberation, and the decisive act. And of course, run, lock, fight are the strategies to these. So run, lock, fight um, not only can be applicable to the school, but we also want you guys to start thinking about just your situational awareness everywhere you go, whether it's in the school or outside in the community. And we're, again, remember, we're just trying to get the your guys' shift in thinking and um, having that situational awareness is so important. Before we can take any action, including run, lock, or fight, we need to understand what will be happening to our bodies as they react to this extreme stress. During any critical incident, our body's mental and physical responses to stressors can act as either a help or a hindrance. The chart on the right shows some of the detrimental effects that an extremely increased heart rate might have on your body. These can uh, vary anywhere from your fine motor skills deteriorating things like you might not be able to hold a pen. Um, other things, your body doesn't think, your brain doesn't think as well as it should. Uh, you might lose part of your vision, get uh, tunnel vision, or not be able to hear things correctly. This increases and increases, and uh, you can see at the end there, you can actually, that's where your body might freeze up. You might not be able to react in any way at all. The best way to negate the negative effects of the fight or flight response is through combat breathing. Combat breathing makes you slow down and focus on the simple task of breathing. 
thereby allowing your heart rate, blood pressure, and respiration to come back to a more reasonable state. Let's practice a set of combat breaths together. You're going to begin by taking a breath for a count of four in through your nose. Once you've completed that breath, you're going to hold it in for a count of four. Now you're going to exhale through your mouth for a count of four and hold that breath out for a count of four. Then repeat the process as many times as you can until you feel relieved. Along with the stressors our body and brain experience during a critical incident, there are also three different phases of acceptance we must process as well. One of them being denial. And a classic example of this is you hear a loud sound in the hallway and it kind of sounds out of place. You know, do you, you want to, I mean, how hard is it just to poke your head out and take a look and, and say, oh, it was a balloon that was popped or a book that was dropped rather than doing nothing and just going about your day, hoping that it's um, nothing out of the ordinary. That's the type of thinking that we want you to change and um, getting past that denial is that first step. Once we move past the denial phase comes the deliberation phase. And this is where Officer Clark talked a little bit in a couple a couple previous slides where our fine motor skills might get diminished, where we're gonna have difficult time, you know, turning a key, a key in a lock, things like that, um, time distortion. Um, you know, it, remember, you know, use combat breathing. Once we can get past this, comes the acting phase. All right, so we've gone through deny, deliberate. Now we've come to the decisive moment. In this instance, we're going to talk about the strategy of running. All right, so it seems simple. Everybody knows how to run. You've run your entire life. There's some strategies that you'd like to employ. We'd like you to employ here. Um, to make the outcome as best that it can be. Uh, we're not gonna run in a straight line. We're going to uh, bob and weave. Uh, we're not gonna run next to walls. You're never gonna stop. Um, if you're running out of a building, school, what have you, you're not gonna go to your car in the parking lot. Uh, you're gonna just keep on running until you are not a target any longer. Keep utilizing your situational awareness. Know your escape routes, exits, windows. If you're in a situation where you feel like locking down is your safest option, um, this is kind of what it looks like. We want you to cover the door um, the best that you can. You know, throw bookshelves over it, chairs, stack computers, anything and everything that you guys can think of. Um, you guys have great imaginations and this is a time to use it. So um, keep quiet as possible, darken the room, call 911. Um, if you can, we also want you to start thinking about, you know, can you enter run mode again? Um, always keep that in the back of your mind. However, make sure you guys barricade that door um, so that nobody can get in or it is extremely difficult for them to get in. I like to think of it as the big three. Um, locking the door, making sure that door is locked before anything else because that is your best bet. Um, the all schools have solid core wood doors. They're gonna provide you a lot of protection, but make sure you lock it first. Shut the lights off and cover that window. If you cannot be seen, you cannot be a target. So we've got some additional thoughts on uh, things to consider when thinking about locking down, um, when you're barricading and getting that door locked. Uh, is it an outward opening door? Is it an inward opening door? These are some of the things that you would want to be thinking about in your situational awareness to know prior to an emergency taking place. Um, don't hide out in bathrooms. They generally don't have outward doors and uh, you can't barricade anyone out. It's never a good place to um, hide out. Uh, once you do go into that lockdown mode, some of the other things you want to do, um, be quiet, maintain silence, um, stay out of sight of any windows that you couldn't block and um, at this point, you have to be ready to fight if someone does make it in through the door. Um, another thing to think of is maybe going back into run mode. If you can see a path to safety um, out a window that you can open or break and then uh, get out of there. 
here's some custom lockdown tools that I've seen in use around the valley at various schools. On the left, you can see a custom blind that uh, rolls down to cover the door's internal window pane. Uh, the center photo, you can see a custom screen print that allows those inside to see out, but uh, others not to be able to see in. Uh, on the far right, you see a magnetic strip that allows the door's strike plate to remain in a locked position, but not engage the door during class time. Uh, if an emergency arises, quickly pull the magnet out of place and the door will be locked. So after covering, running, and locking down comes fight, and um, this is our last resort. Remember, with fight, there are no rules. It's you versus them, you versus him, you versus her, and our goal is to get you to go home at night. All right, that's the only goal is to survive. Um, obviously, two is better than one, five is better than two, so we want you to use that pack mentality. And our, and our goal here is, uh, again, to prevent you guys from doing nothing, okay? We, we want you to win. We want you to be safe and to fight, to come up with anything and everything you can use as a weapon to protect yourselves and to protect others, again, using that uh, imagination that you guys have um, is, you know, use that to your benefit here. And, again, last resort is fighting, but be prepared. Okay, you got him down. Well, who's who's doing what now? Oh, He's down. Call nine nine one. One. Call nine one. I will call 911. To finish up speaking about fight in the presentation, I want to talk about uh, your mindset, having a survivor's and not a victim's mindset. You have to think about it this way. You didn't ask for anyone to come to your school or your place of work and try to hurt people. They made that decision. Your decision is what you do from there. You're going to go home no matter what. Whether they do or not is irrelevant, but you're going to go home. All right. You can see in the upper right hand corner, um, Lieutenant Brian Murphy. He was in an incident in uh, Oak Creek, Wisconsin in 2012. I got to meet him and listen to his story. He responded to an active uh, shooter situation. He ended up uh, getting shot approximately 15 times, I believe. Um, you can see some of the scars in his picture. Um, his talk is about the power of human spirit and the will to survive and never giving up. Even though he was shot that many times, he never ever gave up and told himself he was gonna win that day, and he did. So now we're gonna transition away from what you do when you make the choice to run, lock, or fight to what to expect when the police arrive on scene. You have to understand, uh, when the police get to this call, they're gonna be experiencing much of the same emotion and physical stressors that you are. They're gonna be doing their combat breathing, trying to keep as calm as they can. Um, they might not have the information of 
what the suspect looks like, who they are. So everyone could be treated and will be treated like a suspect until uh, they know what's going on. Um, the best thing you can do in this situation is help give any information you may have as to what you saw, where the shooter is. But the very most important thing you can do is show us your hands. Raise your hands, put them out in front of you, and um, we'll move on from there. Obviously, the main priority for police when they arrive on scene at the school or business is to find and neutralize the active intruder. Um, they're going to be running by you. If they ask directions uh, or descriptions, please try to give it to them, again, while showing your hands. Um, if they pass you by and you're wounded, just know they will come back once the primary job is done. They have to stop more wounded or people from being killed, and then they will refocus on the wounded and getting people out of the building and making it safe for medical to come in and get to everyone else. Thanks for watching the presentation with us. We, um, you know, to summarize things, we talked about some things that might happen in a critical incident, you know, physical changes throughout your body, but also diving into run, lock, fight. And we just hope that you guys use this tool anywhere you go, because remember, it can be out in the community, in the school, in a business, wherever you're at. And um, again, we just want, uh, this to be a tool for your life's toolbox and we hope that you guys can participate in Runlock Fight training in the future and we thank you for your time. Yep, Wiley's exactly right. Hopefully in the future we can get uh, Runlock Fights back up and running, not in just the virtual format, uh, but get back out to schools and start doing that because it's a great tool, it's a great way of uh, thinking and uh, going through your life being safe. So thank you very much for watching.